this video we'll talk about interleukin 1. So interleukin 1 was first described 35 years ago as a secreted product of monocytes and neutrophils. So this was now known as interleukin 1 alpha and beta. Interleukin 1 beta is basically more important in all biological context. But this was several years back when people identified this protein, they found that this particular protein orchestrated the communication between leukocytes. And hence the name was proposed as interleukins. That's how the interleukin name come from. If you want to learn more about the overview about interleukin, click on the video in the i button. But this is focused towards interleukin 1 and its inhibitors. So interleukin 1 family has several members, but IL-1, alpha and beta are the most uh, prominent of them. So all the interleukin, most of the interleukin 1 family members uh, are known for their pro-inflammatory roles. Generally, cells like macrophages and dendritic cells secrete interleukin 1 family of cytokines. Question is, what is the trigger for IL-1 secretion? The major trigger for IL-1 secretion is basically infection. So there are several pattern recognition receptors or PRR on the surface of dendritic cell and macrophages. So they can recognize viruses, helminths and bacteria, which signals the nucleus to produce these interleukin-1 family of cytokines. And this is how interleukin-1 family of cytokine is secreted. So the cause of IL-1 secretion is infection. The consequence of IL-1 secretion is inflammation. Okay, let's try to understand what interleukin-1 is capable of doing. Once secreted, interleukin-1 can actually modify the capillary uh, endothelial cells and they can change the vascular permeability. So the capillary endothelial cells become more permeable. Things can move out of these blood vessels. Also, the adhesion properties of these endothelial cells are altered. So overall, several immune cells, for example, neutrophil, try to escape the blood vessel and reach the site of infection. So this is one of the most important function of IL-1. It evokes inflammation and attract more immune cells. So IL-1, just to summarize what we learned, IL-1 acts on the capillary endothelial cells, it changes the permeability and it leads to the extravasation of several uh, basically uh, immune cells like neutrophils, monocytes, etc. Neutrophils further secrete IL-1 or IL-18 to basically attract many other um, macrophages and dendritic cells to the site of infection. So it's kind of like an alarm signal. But the overall consequence is inflammation. So this is kind of like the localized uh, function of interleukin 1. So the site of infection is the site of inflammation as well. This is the primary site. But sometimes what happens is interleukin 1 get also secreted into the bloodstream and it can reach the liver where it can induce the liver to produce acute phase proteins such as TNF, uh, such as TNF alpha, such as interferon 1, interleukin 6 and chemokine CXCL8. All of that together kind of increases the inflammation in the body. Anyway, these acute phase of protein can lead to basically destruction of the viral RNA. It can lead to the generation of symptomatic fever. It can also lead to activation of both T and B cells. Now let's try to understand the production of interleukin-1 as a cytokine in a bit more detail. So here are some bacteria which are recognized and engulfed by these macrophages. Now let's zoom in to understand what really happens. So overall, the toll-like receptor leads to several signaling cascade which ultimately lead to the transcription of interleukin-1 gene. The interleukin-1 gene produces the pro-interleukin-1 let's say interleukin 1 beta protein. So it's a pro format of that protein. This is not active, active yet. Now there are several other components known as inflammasome complex that can cleave the pro interleukin 1 beta into the mature interleukin 1 beta. And once this cleavage happens, this is ready to be secreted outside. And now it is secreted outside. Inside the neutrophil, things could be similar but also could be different. So inside the neutrophil, the pro-interleukin-1 gets converted into interleukin-1 with the help of myeloblastin. It's basically a serine protease. Apart from these, there could be other 
uh, components such as like neutrophil elastase, cathepsin G, granzyme A, all are capable to convert pro-interleukin-1 to interleukin-1. So neutrophil-mediated interleukin beta in activation is a bit different from the inflammasome-mediated activation. But anyway, the consequence is same, secretion of the interleukin-1 family of proteins. So now let's try to understand uh, why this kind of thing happens in neutrophil. Because neutrophils are the uh, cells which invade the tissue uh, as a first responders. So a robust activation of interleukin 1 beta in the inflammed, inflamed tissue is really important to evoke a robust inflammation as well. Anyway, there are three major uh, ligands in this particular interleukin 1 family. Interleukin 1, we are so far talking mostly about interleukin 1. Then interleukin 18 and interleukin 33. All of them has their own receptors. So, for example, interleukin-1 binds to a hetero uh, heterodimer called interleukin-1-R1 and interleukin-1-RACP. And interleukin-18 also bind to interleukin receptor 18 alpha and beta. Whereas interleukin-33 bind to T1-ST2 and interleukin-R1-ACP receptor. So, all these heterogeneous receptors uh, make sure the affinity for specific interleukins are um, maintained for different cell type. Let's talk about the signaling cascade underlying the interleukin 1. So here you can see interleukin 1 beta let's say binds to the specific heterodimer of interleukin 1 R and interleukin R1 cap. Then it binds to specific uh, adapter proteins known as MID88 which further activates downstream kinases. So this is uh, this TRAF6 is TNF receptor associated factor so ultimately, it would again activate another cascade of kinase known as TAC1. Eventually, that can lead to the activation of MAP kinase pathway and activate AP1 family of transcription factor, or it can also activate the NF kappa beta family of transcription factor. Now, based on these activation, it can lead to further gene transcription, and the genes that are transcribed are maybe prostaglandins, maybe more interleukins, interleukin 70s, 17s, rank L, matrix metalloproteinases, which can modify the extracellular matrix as well. So a wide variety of genes can be transcribed underlying the interleukin 1 signaling cascade. Now let me tell you, interleukin receptor signaling cascade is mediated very uh, strategic way. So basically this is the receptor and this is the ligand, but also there are inhibitory ligand such as interleukin 1RA. This can compete with the interleukin-1 for this particular receptor and can inhibit the interleukin-1 mediated signals. There are many other receptors such as interleukin-1R2, secreted interleukin-1R2, secreted L1R cap. All these things can attenuate the signaling from the main interleukin receptor. So why we are talking about this? In a moment, when we talk about the clinical perspective, these concepts would come again. So stay, stay tuned till the end. Now let's talk about the cellular level effect of interleukin-1. Interleukin-1 can modulate the activity of various immune cell types. One of the most prominent one is basically neutrophil itself. Then uh, basically mast cells, then which is mistakenly uh, written as neutrophils again. But anyway, then TH17 subcategory of T helper cells, osteoclasts, etc. When it comes to the organ level, it has also several prominent effects. For example, it can change the matrix uh, metalloprotease enzymes, right? So the extracellular matrix of the cartilage can be remodified with, uh, with the action of interleukin 1. Then there are bone osteoclast activation can happen underlying this interleukin 1 signaling. The uh, intimal infl uh, inflammation in the blood vessels is pretty prominent. There could be fever response and pain processing happening in the hypothalamus triggered by interleukin 1b and there could be apoptosis of pancreatic beta cells. Anyway, there are wide variety of effect that can be triggered by the interleukin 1 uh, beta signaling. Now let's talk about the interleukin 1 antagonist. One of the key antagonists is basically interleukin 1RA, which is known as anakinra. So basically interleukin 1RA is an inhibitory ligand that competes with interleukin 1 to bind to this receptor. 
anyway, it triggers the attenuation of the signaling cascade by the normal receptor. There are other variety of antibodies such as uh, Givokizumab and Kanakinumabs. Anyway, the MAB stands for antibodies. All these things can bind to interleukin 1 beta and basically it can uh, sequester these uh, interleukin ligands and prevent it to bind binding with the receptor. So obviously if the ligand cannot bind to the receptor, this response is attenuated. Anyway, these kind of antibodies or these kind of inhibitory ligands has wide variety of clinical application. It has been used to treat rheumat rheumatoid arthritis, then bunch of other autoimmune symptoms as listed below. For example, adult onset of Stills disease and many more. Now let's talk about interleukin 18. It is produced by both hematopoietic and non-hematopoietic cells, including monocytes, macrophages, keratinocytes, and mesenchymal cells. So a wide variety of uh, cells actually secrete interleukin-18. It's also an in interleukin-1 family of cytokine. Anyway, just like any other family member, its property is to basically evoke inflammation. So it's a pro-inflammatory cytokine. Interleukin-18 is involved in host defense against uh, uh, host defense against viral infection. Then it regulates innate as well as acquired immune response. Now interleukin-18 stimulates both innate and acquired response. This is important. And uh, it can also trigger variety of cellular activation. For example, it can sort of uh, modulate the activity of macrophages, dendritic cells, natural killers, B and T cells. So interleukin-18 cannot induce Th1 cell development but has the capacity to activate Th1 cells to produce interferon gamma. Anyway, the Th1 cell which can secrete interferon gamma has wide variety of activity. Anyway, interleukin-18 can trigger natural killer cell or NKT cells to come into the picture as well. Interleukin-18 and interleukin-33, both are interleukin-1 family members that we talked about previously. They can induce innate allergic response by stimulating the mast cells and the basophil. So basically they sensitize the mast cell and basophil and trigger them to secrete interleukin-4, IL-33 and histamine, which is a key modulator of inflammation. So anyway, basically IL-4 can trigger the Th0 cell differentiation into Th2 cell or Th2 subtype. Just like normal interleukin signaling regime, IL-18 also act via specific uh, molecules such as MyD88, TRAM. Ultimately, it activates the IRAC kinases and downstream to which NF-kappa beta activation happens. So NF-kappa beta mediated transcription can po possibly happen also, the MAP kinase pathway can be triggered uh, downstream to these interleukin-18 receptors, which can lead to the production of several other genes in the MAP kinase pathway. Anyway, most of the product of these signaling cascade is more inflammatory mediators, such as inflammatory cytokines. In interleukin-18 is now becoming more and more clinically relevant because it is important in context of rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, type 1 diabetes mellitus, systemic lupus, and atopic dermatitis. So that is why interleukin-18 is really attracting the overall uh, scientific uh, attention and the medical attention. So I hope uh, this video was useful and we discussed mainly interleukin-1, interleukin-18, not too much interleukin-33, but it kind of gives a idea about the capability of these interleukin-1 family members. So, I, uh, so please uh, go to our Instagram page to get more notes and flashcards. You can support our channel using super thanks or uh, PayPal. See you in next video.